What is going on guys? Tomcat here and I am back again with another episode of Forza Motorsport 5. Now we are trying to, I'm really trying to get uh, more credits to be honest, that's what I'm trying to do. So, and I'm also trying to level up, so we'll get a bonus when we level up. Now, we are at a circuit race at Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca. So let's go ahead and get this thing finished as quickly as possible so we can get that cash and start looking for new cars. Let's go! Next rival is Dr. Wee Wee, no problem. Oh, Slap's back there in his mini. Really? Off on the grass already? Or dirt? <laughs> dirt for this track. Get around Booney. Oh god, taking hits, yes, yep. My car's taking hits from the side and from the back being hit all over the place. Yes, 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 yes! Come on, see if I can fit right between these two. Taking him on the inside. Yes, 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 come on! Come on! Down in a second. Staying on the inside. Dang. Let myself go out. Like, let the, I let the car go out way further than I wanted it to. I mean, not a lot, but... Just kind of lost that... Oh, God. Bad line. Terrible line. Heading up the hill. Closing in on the corkscrew. One of the craziest corners pretty much ever on any track. One corner that I still am nowhere near close to mastering. It's a lot easier in these uh, these slower cars, like these hot hatchbacks, but pretty soon I'm going to be racing some faster cars, so we'll see, you know, we'll see how it goes in faster cars. Oh jeez! Yeah, that was too much. To way too much speed flying into that corner. Started should have started breaking way back here. Dang, that helicopter is flying really low, going straight over. Dang, that is cool. It's little things like the helicopter, for example, that I don't know, that just add a really nice, a lot of really nice touches to this game. Next rival is Booney. Let's see if I can beat him. A lot of, yeah, way too much. Way too much speed going into, into that corner caused a lot of understeer. And allowed those guys to catch up. Stay on the rumble strip. What you really want to do is you want to be able to stay right on the tip of the rumble strip without going into the uh, out going into the grass. Here we go. Yes, that is how I wanted to take that corner. Exactly how I wanted to take it. Line it up. You don't even really need to downshift for that corner. If you're if you've got enough space, you really don't need to downshift for it. If you're in third. Just really let off the throttle, brake just a little bit, and let the car flow through that corner. This corner, however, the corkscrew, uh, yeah, difficult. Very difficult corner. Whoa. Bring it back. Come on, come on, keep it. There we go. Coming up on the final corner. Waited a bit longer than I probably should have to break, but it still left me with enough time to get to get my braking done before I had to actually turn. Alright, final lap, and I beat XL Booney. It's probably gonna be. Oh, it's AR12. Dang it, my engine started. Well, you know what? You know what? I'm not gonna deal with a messed up engine now. I'm going to rewind twice, because I'm not willing to deal with a messed up engine. 
Was it seriously messed up all the way back here? What? Yeah, it was. Apparently, somehow, I messed it up again. Don't know how I did it, but apparently I messed it up somehow. And start breaking. First was pro Yeah, that was... I slowed down way too much. I really don't have the feel for this car still. I've been driving it for a little while now, but I don't have the feel for it yet at all, really. I mean, I have a little bit of a sense of it, but... I'm, I can get the feel for faster cars quicker than I can for slower cars for some reason. Probably because I'm used to the faster, uh, faster cars breaking points. Although the AI drivers are really far away. Well, not really even AI. Or drive avatars, as I should call them now. That is a lot of smoke coming out of the back of the car. And I can definitely feel the drop in power. That is, dang it, that is not a feeling you want to feel. Ever. And also, if you go around that corner, if you kind of hook your front wheels into that, in, well, at least one of your front wheels into that little dip right on the rumble strip, you can really get around a lot quicker. Dive into the corkscrew! Power it, power it, power it. Power it through and, oh, down a second. Power it out. Yes. Keep it going. Oh, God. Power towards the finish. Come on, come on, come on. And since I'm so far ahead... I'm gonna e-brake it across the line, just spin it through, <laughs> just spin it across the line. Wonder how much money I got for that. Please tell me I have enough money to buy something really cool now. I know I'm gonna get a bonus from the leveling up, so should get, so should be able to get something interesting. So 8,415 for the race. But, after leveling up, I should get something else. Yeah, 15,750. And, I don't, yeah, I see my total XP, but I do not see my total credits. So that is level 10. And, let's see. Let's see where we go next, and then, after that, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave the career and see what cars we can buy now, because I really, really, really want to be able to get a supercar. Really want to be able to get a supercar so I can get into some quicker races. And some online gameplay. In 2012, the scientists at the Large Hadron Collider prepared to smash two particles together to unlock the darkest secrets of the universe for the very first time. Before they could do that, however, they needed someone to guard the emergency stop button in case the experiment went wrong. Only one man in the world was fast enough for this job, the stick. Fortunately, the collision went entirely to plan, except for one thing. At the precise moment the two particles hit, the tame racing driver banged his crash helmet against the powerful supercomputers in the lab, and the very spirit of the stick was sucked into the mainframe. Soon afterwards, the digital likeness was captured on a USB stick and handed back to Top Gear, where he was examined and found to be just like the Stig in every way, except one. There was a glitch in the code that made it possible to beat him, but only if you're really, really good. All right, well, we have now met the Stig's digital cousin, which, if you guys remember that trailer, I sure do. So, the Stig's digital cousin, so... We have 112,000 credits. Let's go ahead and do this race. Because I know it's going to be quick, but I know it's also going to be really fun. The Stig. Oh, God. Can I beat the Stig? Come on. Come on. Coming up to the first corner, coming up to the first corner, Focus ST braking hard, down to second, 
going a bit wide. Apparently that's the line Formula One drivers take, according to Top Gear. Coming around Chicago, sliding a little bit and understeering on the way out. Way ahead of the stig on the straightaway, way ahead. Into fourth, approaching the hammerhead, hard braking, down to second. Around the hammerhead, down to first, way wide, focus ST understeering. Coming up to the follow through as I attempt to do a Top Gear style commentary. Almost completely flat through there. The Stig is but a mere speck in the Focus ST's rear view mirror now. Oh god, come on! Oh, way, way, way wide. And, oh god, second lap, and I beat Slap. Beat Slap. Haha, -ha, next rival is Domestic Mango. The real Stig. <laughs> the Stig's digital cousin is just a cousin. Now I'm, now I'm trying to beat the real Stig, Domestic Mango. Get off the grass, come on, get off the damn grass, jeez. Into Chicago. And power on. Into third, come on, come on, push it down the straightaway. I wish they would show me Mango's ghost car, I really do. Taking out the cones. Yes, some cone murdering going on. Front tires squealing under pressure. Not squealing, screaming. See if I can get... Uh, I, I lifted. I was going to attempt to go completely flat through the follow through, but... Uh, not with that line. Not with that line. Was completely flat past the tires, though. But then again, almost anything can go completely flat past the past the tires, except for, well, except for a Veyron or an Ajira or a Venom GT. And across the line. Now I know we'd beat the Stig's digital cousin, but did we beat the real Stig, Domestic Mango? Please tell me we did. Please tell me we did. Achievement unlocked, some say. 4,590 credits? I'll take it. I'll take it. Yes! I not only beat the Stig's digital cousin, but I also beat Domestic Mango. The real Stig, the real Forza Stig at least. Alright. So now after we go to the next location, we can back out and go see what cars we can buy. Finally, right? Finally we can go see what cars we can buy. Alright, so we have 116,000 credits, so let's go ahead and back out. And really see what we can buy now. And for some reason, I redeemed my Forza rewards, and I was supposed to get an extra 70,000 credits, but it never came. In fact, I'm gonna actually, once this loads, I'm gonna go back to the main menu and see if that ever arrived. No, no, no. Nothing in the message center, why not? Why not? Alright, I guess I'll have to just see what cars I can afford with the cash I have. Alrighty. Let's see. What are we what are we gonna what well, what can we afford first of all? Now let's see. Filter by affordable cars. And go all the way to the beginning. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> Yes, affordable on, and now, okay, now that is a lot better. Now let's go back to the beginning, back to the beginning. I kind of want to buy something interesting, but I also want to buy 
a supercar at the same time. So let's see. I want something quick. We can have the Audi RS7, but we'd only be left with 6,000 credits. We also have the RS5 Coupe. Hmm, let's see. Maybe we have the M6 Coupe. Now that is quick. Uh... CTSV. We could get a C5 Z06. We could get a C6 ZR1. A ZL1 Camaro. Hmm. This is like a really tough choice. It really is, guys. Oh, we could get a GT500. And that's already B600. A GMC Cyclone. Holden HSV GTS, that is a sideways drift machine. Civic Type R, another Civic Type R, NSX. Um, God, so many awesome cars. Even the Grand Cherokee SRT8. Or the KTM Crossbow R. Now that is a really interesting car because it's one of the new open wheel cars. I might actually end up going with that. Let me just see what else there is. Uh, Diablo SV. Um... Or the, dude, the Exige S, the new Exige S is a sweet car. Um. Dang, oh man, original Mini, original Mini. Or a 240, but then again I have that, uh, that Miata, that V8 Miata project car, so. 370, we could get a GTR. A GTR would be sweet. Anything else I'm gonna... Is there anything else here I might want? Think... Oh, dude. A 2013 Viper. I, yeah, I want that. That's for sure. But you know what? I think I'm gonna have to go with the KTM Crossbow R because it's one of the new... Uh, it's one of the new open wheels, obviously. And the other cars I can save up for, but this thing, this thing is sweet. I have been wanting to drive this thing ever since uh, I saw it in the trailer. It, ooh, that's a sweet design. You could put a wing on it. <laughs> well, that camo doesn't look bad at all. That actually looks really nice. That's cool. Hmm... Let me see, let me see. I'll, I'll be honest, I like that camo design. I think that camo design is really, really cool. But, I don't know if I'm gonna take it. Uh, that design is really nice. I'm gonna take that design. Oh, God. Oh, God. Wow. Wow. Seriously in love with this thing. Oh, my God. All right, well, if you guys enjoyed this episode, don't forget to leave me a like. Tell me in the comment section below what you thought of it. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and come back next time where I start to where I drive this thing for the very first time. And I will see you guys later.